Hello everyone. Greetings in Jesus' name. You're through to St Mark's Online. This video uploaded for Sunday the 9th of July, AD 2023. I'm Jonathan Fraze. Thank you for joining me. Lord, the light of your love is shining. In the midst of the darkness shining, Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Lord, I come to your awesome presence, from the shadows into your radiance. By your blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory, mirrored here, may our lives tell your story, shine on me, shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word. Lord, and let there be light. I love those terms. Flood the nations. And we're on Sea Sunday at St Mark's. Taking the moment to use uh, many themes of a watery nature from Scripture. Let's turn to our confession plunging into that admission of our guilt and need for forgiveness. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from your ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have broken your holy laws. We have left undone what we ought to have done, and we have done what we ought not to have done and apart from your grace there is no health in us. O Lord, have mercy on us. Spare those who confess their faults. Restore those who repent, as you have promised through Jesus Christ our Lord. And grant, O merciful Father, for his sake, that we may live a godly, righteous and disciplined life, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Collect for the fifth Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, we pray that you may so govern the course of this world that it may be peaceably ordered, and that your church may joyfully serve you in all godly quietness, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Psalm 93 The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty and is armed with strength. The world is firmly established, it cannot be moved. Your throne was established long ago, you are from all eternity. The seas have lifted up, O Lord, the seas have lifted up their voice, the seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Your statutes stand firm. Holiness adorns your house 
for endless days, O Lord. Thanks be to God. John 21 Afterwards Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Early in the morning Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realise that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. Then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. As soon as Simon Peter heard him say, it is the Lord, he wrapped his outer garment around him, for he had taken it off, and jumped into the water. The other disciples followed in the boat, towing the net full of fish, for they were not far from shore, about a hundred yards. When they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals there with fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish you have just caught. Simon Peter climbed aboard and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, a hundred and fifty-three, but even with so many the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. Heavenly Father, in this voyage, in the ark of your church, grant that Jesus will be our captain and we take navigation instructions from him with obedient wills and honest hearts for your name's sake. Amen. We live in Bexhill on Sea. We walk by the sea. We campaign for a clean sea. The large area in church is called the nave, same root as for navy, so a gathering of people who are the crew and the sailors. And we find many incidents involving the sea in the Bible. So welcome to Sea Sunday. Today I ask, where do we go from here? Four headings. Firstly, Peter's idea. There are some things you cannot do for yourself. The angel at the empty tomb told the women to tell the disciples that Jesus is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Matthew 28, verse 7. And now the disciples are at the right place. They must wait because Jesus makes himself known to us. It is not we who tell him when and how to meet us. The section begins, uh, Jesus appeared again to his disciples, chapter 21, verse 1. And that's a telling comment. Jesus does the appearing. The significant moments in your own spiritual journey were not organised by you, but you needed to be available. Seven days, seven disciples, I'll start with seven disciples, were together by the Sea of Tiberias, another name for Galilee, and seven, ever since the number of the days of creation, is symbolic of a perfect work of God. John's Gospel has recorded seven I am sayings of Christ and selected seven miracles to go with them. What John records for us is therefore a divinely arranged moment of Jesus gathering his workers. 
I'm going out to fish, said Simon Peter. The name given by his parents, Simon, followed by the name given by Christ, Peter. The two names indicate he's an ordinary man called to extraordinary things. A spiritual man commissioned, and by the end of John 21 recommissioned, to a supernatural work. And a fisherman, about to be a fisher of men. That expression from Matthew 4, 19. Always a speaker. Frequently the restless initiator. And generally the headstrong man of action. Peter says, I'm going out to fish. This is his intent. He wants to use time profitably. He likes to put his skills to good use. And being out on the boat will help him recall water-based experiences with Jesus, such as the great catch of fish, which was an early use of Jesus' divine power, or the stilling of the storm when the crew witnessed his power over wind and waves and asked, who is this? And Peter himself walking on water when his own desire to augment Jesus' word of assurance with an extra experience led to a humiliating fall. Character develops, personalities remain. First section, Peter's idea. Secondly, Jesus' help. The risen master stands on the shore as the sun rises. Night was best for fishing because fish swim nearer the surface. But the seven disciples had caught nothing. As Jesus often does, he draws people out to declare with their own words the state of their lives. Noticing that the boat did not come to shore to unload a catch, Jesus declares his goodwill and asks, Friends, haven't you any fish? Their reply must have been tired and disappointed in tone. No. Jesus then issues a command with a promise. Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. Already he had done this in establishing the priority of spiritual concerns over physical needs. So in Matthew 6.33, Seek first his, that's the Father's kingdom, and his righteousness, and all these things, that's clothes and drink and food, will be given you as well. Do you see? Command and promise. Also in the specific matter of prayer, Seek and you will find. Matthew 7, verse 7, and in the invitation to the world. Matthew eleven twenty eight, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. That shalom, which was the yearning of the Old Testament. The disciples obeyed. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. The Lord of the harvest, you see, was directing operations. Third part, John's vision. The apostolic band were exhausted by a night of work and still processing the roller coaster experience of the death and resurrection of Christ, and joy rises in their hearts again. John, the writer of the Gospel, now refers to himself. Among those in the boat, he had been listed under sons of Zebedee. When accompanying Peter to the empty tomb in a previous chapter, he had referred to himself four times as the other disciple. But now he uses a signature term for himself in the third of four uses. The disciple whom Jesus loved. John is known as the apostle of love. Regarding the nations, he includes John 3.16, God so loved the world. Regarding the call of the church, he records Jesus' mandate, love one another, in John 13, 34. Regarding the interpretation of scripture, whereby the God of Israel sent his own son to die for our sins, he concludes in 1 John 3, 16, God is love. So John now coins a phrase that invites the hearer to access and share the same individual experience of following Christ. If I can say, 
I'm the one whom Jesus loved. Why can you not? Wouldn't that be good for you too? Wrapped around such a personal comment are numerous eyewitness recollections. The words John said, it is the Lord. Peter wrapping his outer garment around him and jumping into the water. Usually, of course, you would do the reverse to keep it dry. But Peter is very excited. The distance to the shore, about a hundred yards. What Jesus was cooking, fish and bread. What Jesus said, bring some of the fish you have just caught. And the size and number of them, 153, large. As only fishermen could be obsessed about. Even that wonderful thing about uh, the net not being torn. uh, Part of God's supernatural gift. To enjoy the day. The gospel you see is history and God in Christ visited us in real space and real time in a real body making real relationships. And fourth and final part, everyone eats. Jesus feeds the disciples from his beach barbecue. He has kept his word to meet them in Galilee. Crucifixion, the worst the world could do to him, was not the end of the story and turned out to be part of the plan of God with Jesus, our Passover lamb, atoning for sin. It is breakfast, and the involuntary fast that the shock of the cross is formally over. Jesus had foretold in Matthew 9.15, the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. More than that, with the resurrection of the Lord, God is king among them and the exile of spiritual banishment is finally over. It had started with exile to Babylon, but the return to Judea and living under Roman rule felt like the exile had continued. So with God so powerfully present, it felt like a new era was at hand. Food times with Jesus were often memorable, feeding the 5,000, feeding the 4,000, the Last Supper, unforgettable. Each one speaks of God providing for us, God drawing near to care for us, and looks forward to the final feast in heaven called the Wedding Supper of the Lamb, which Jesus spoke about in his parable of the Great Banquet. Those who come to Christ are tested and tried, but not disappointed or let down. None of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. John has presented the evidence for Christ in his gospel and now he invites you to experience following the Master too. Then he'll tell you what to do next. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Christ, arisen, finding us, leading us and directing us. Grant that he would be our guide, that he would be our master, and that we would be a faithful crew now and always. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The family prayer. The prayer to take us through the choppy waters of this world into our final eternal port. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us pray. We start with the church. Gracious God and saving Lord, the shepherd of our souls, we pray for the church worldwide. Particularly we remember Robin and Lorna are working in Central Asia, praying for wisdom and strength in teaching the faith and in supervising uh, other mission partners to the area and indeed uh, taking uh, inquiring potential workers to see uh, what the Lord has been doing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our protector, strong deliverer and mighty fortress. Be a shield of defence for those persecuted for the faith today and all prisoners of conscience. We particularly think of states strongly affected by militant Islam such as northern Nigeria, Somalia, Mozambique, Pakistan, Iran, Iraq and Afghanistan. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for the world, Lord God, ruler of nations, king of the ages. Have mercy today on those in war zones, Ukraine, Yemen, Syria, Sudan. Gracious God, whose Son made peace with warring humanity on the cross, by your Spirit confound all aggressors, soften hard hearts, limit the harm to life and limb, bring peace to war-torn states. Help refugees and their hosts in every land. And cause your church to stand strong in each nation as a people of hope and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign Lord, bless and guide Charles, our King, his royal family, Prime Minister and government. And management and unions among workforces seeking to avert industrial action. Internationally, we remember those who man the ships that crisscross our seas, bringing uh, foods and other things uh, to various countries. And back in Britain, we bring our emergency services towards you, asking that you protect the police, and firefighters, paramedics, air ambulance staff, coast guards, lifeboat crews and more in their often dangerous work. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pray for our community, our parish and town, for its peace and prosperity, remembering the work of Bexhill Food Bank and Ukrainian guests living amongst us. Just a few miles along the coast is the Beachy Head Chaplaincy with their refurbished centre, seeking God's grace in every cliff-edge encounter. And Lord God, may they offer good comfort to those who have lost loved ones too. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We do not forget the sick, those in distress in the storms of this life. God of compassion, we remember those who are ill in body, mind or spirit and those who care for them. God of all consolation, we thank you for those who have fought the good fight of faith and kept the faith to the end with joy in their salvation, in the power of your Spirit. And we pray for your peace for those who mourn. And now a prayer for ourselves and the worship we offer in our lives throughout the week. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, we praise you for bringing us safely to the beginning of this day. Defend us with your mighty power and grant that we fall into no sin nor run into any kind of danger, but govern and guide us at all times, so that we may do what is right in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. A closing hymn which draws on this theme of sea, I the Lord of sea and sky. I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin my hand will save. 
I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? I, the Lord of snow and rain, I have borne my people's pain. I have wept for love of them. They turn away. I will break their hearts of stone, give them hearts for love alone. I will speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? I, the Lord of wind and flame, I will tend the poor and lame. I will set a feast for them, my hand will save. Finest bread I will provide, till their hearts are satisfied. I will give my life to them, whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord, is it I, Lord, I have heard? You calling in the night, I will go, Lord, if you lead me, I will hold your people in my heart. And now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all whom you love, both near and far, and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you for remaining in contact with St Mark.